God, sinners and saints, welcome to the Sunday School edition of the good old Fat Farm 2023. And I have no clue what we're going to call it next year when 2023 is over. Maybe I'll just make the big Fat Farm church. How about that? Fat Farm 2023. Can you imagine someone ask you, where do you go to church at? I go to the Fat Farm. What? That's offensive. Be offended. Be offended. You know, if you can't be offended here... What do you think is going to happen out there in the real world where people are offended all the time and you get offended? And, you know, but today in this Bible lesson, I was just on that walk this morning. I was telling the Facebook crew here, but I just been usually spend a few minutes with them before I get onto the YouTube. You know, my wife and I are going out tomorrow. Took the day off of work. We're going to go enjoy ourselves. Do you want peace in your life? I got peace. Do you want a good marriage? Do you want some money in the bank? Do you, you want to live that victorious life, this elusive victorious life, this elusive peaceful life? Do you want to be able to sit in the middle of a storm, in the middle of everything that is going wrong and have peace in your life? You've got to go into the Word of God. So let's go into James this morning on this Thursday Sunday school. It's Thursday. I preach Sunday school on Thursday, Friday, whenever the Lord leads me. I just feel like it this morning. I just want to say a special thanks to all my followers and the growth of this, whatever people want to call it, a ministry, a following, a cult, whatever it is, but the Lord's hands on all of us. I just cannot express that enough. I have seen God move in people because they were willing to do this one thing this year. We're going to the book of James here. Now, James 1 and 11, James 1 and 11, I want you to get, get a Bible. I want it to be paper. I told them all year, paper, told them in the churches I preach in, get you a paper Bible, get you a pen. You can mark in it. You can make notes. This needs to be Become part of you. Hold on to it. Cherish it. Protect it. Take it to your heart. Show it some love. Take it into a restaurant. Lay it up on the table down there at the old Chick-fil-A or wherever you're eating at. Read it to your children while you're sitting there. Make this a part of your life. That's how we become happy. As happy as we can be on this side of heaven. They say, you want to be successful? Success does not come from how much money is in that bank. Success comes from how do you feel when you lay down at night? How do you feel when you get down and pray? What do your prayers look like? What are you praying for? Are you praying a lot more for a lot more things that you don't really need because of this? It says in James 1 and 11, For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth. And the grace of the fashion of it perished. So also shall the rich man fade away in all his ways, in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for the people that are watching this. I pray for all of us that make a decision just to stand here, be here, listen to these words. As many of us have been enticed by the lust of our flesh and the pride of this life, many of us have been led away by our own desires and our own lust away from you, Jesus. Lord, many of us have grieved the Holy Ghost. Many of us have turn toward the flesh and the ideology of this world. Lord, I stand before you just as guilty as everybody else at times, God. When I do not yield to that precious spirit, 
When I allow wanting to be popular, I allow wanting to please people, I allow the temptations of this world and the desire of my flesh to take me from that old rugged cross, Lord. I stand just as guilty, Lord. Forgive me for the things that I do in my life, God, that displease you. And I pray that the people that watch this will learn also how to repent and turn away from this lost and dying world, God, and turn to the cross, turn to the blood of Jesus, turn to that precious Holy Ghost, and turn to those ways that we need to live in in order to truly have victory on this side of eternity and never lose sight of the one thing that we need to have on our mind every day, and that is to have souls saved, God. And Lord, I pray, put that anointing on me to preach this word on this Sunday school. Lord, in accordance with your will, in accordance with your perfect will, God. And I love you today. I thank you, Jesus. Bless this word. Bless these people. Bless us with the power, God, to endure temptation. Amen and amen and amen and amen and glory to God. And I'm telling you right now. As we lose the Facebook feed, but that's okay. We'll lose the Facebook feed. We'll post this a little bit later on. Amen. So we're going to go right into the book of James as we preach and teach the Word of God. When it says here, it says, Blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Do you really love God today? What does your life look like? Is your life and your activities and your will and your desire, is it looking like you love God? What does it mean to love God? Because when the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil, when we are chasing things on this internet world and we're reading books of self-help and things that are magnifying the power of self and I am, does it really show a true love for God? But I'm telling you, it is a temptation of the devil in this life uh, to always have the focus on our finances and our jobs and where we're going in this life and who we are to try to fit into social circles. Uh, but the Bible teaches uh, that let no man deceive you. That is a temptation of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the life. Here is what we should be desiring. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. The devil took Jesus to the pinnacles of the temple, promised him the whole world. What was the devil promising Jesus? He was promising him a kingdom that the devil didn't even own. The devil may have had dominion over it because of sin, because he made Adam and Eve sin, but he was offering Jesus something that he couldn't even fulfill or truly give Jesus, and that's what the world offers us. You take a young man, you take a young woman, look at the military people that go through basic training and they go down and they get their brand new Camaro or their brand new truck and now their entire paycheck is going to the payment of that truck or that car. They were enticed by the lust of this world. They didn't exhibit wisdom. They didn't look that that purchase was going to come with a price that was going to be paid over a long amount of time and give it back. When every man is tempted, he is drawn away of his own lust and he is enticed. When we don't control the lust of the flesh, the lust of the appetite, the lust of the pride of life, when we allow these eyes to do what they want and these ears to do what they want, it will take us into places that we never thought we would go. Down the darkest roads that we thought we would never go but I'm telling you that the business of being a Christian teaches us that it's better to have never known Christ it's better to have never known the word it's better to have never lived the Christian way to feel the baptism and the power of the Holy Ghost to feel the love and the grace and the peace to feel the conviction and the Holy Ghost tears it would have been better to have never known those things than to have known them and departed from them and many of us uh, depart because of the lust of the flesh but the Bible says but every man is tempted and when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed this happens then when lust hath conceived it bringeth forth sin and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death when David looked at Bathsheba 
His eyes were not under control. His spirit was not under control. His mind was not under control. You are accountable, listeners, to be under control and under the subjection of Christ Jesus. When you walk on a car lot, if you are under the subjection of Christ Jesus, you'll make better financial decisions when you go to purchase an automobile. You'll make better decisions when you go to purchase a house. Because when you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, you will finally realize that you don't need a mansion on a hill here on this earth because you're laying your treasure up in heaven. And when you're laying that treasure up in heaven, your focus is on heaven. So you can live in a smaller house with less bills, less worries, and have more peace because you're not enticed by the big things in this life. Amen. Glory to God. And it says here, when he is drawn away of his own lust and is enticed, and when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. When David looked at Bathsheba, if we recap the story, you'll remember. He was on a rooftop. She was on a rooftop. He looked at the beauty of her, and he's like, I gotta have her. He ends up having an encounter with her that produces a child. That child was born in adultery. That child ended up getting Bathsheba's husband killed by the hands of David, sending him into the front lines of battle. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. He was drawn away, he was enticed, didn't guard his eyes, didn't guard his ears, didn't listen to the wisdom, David being anointed, who in this world has not stood and had some lust and some enticement and some something looks better than it does here. A new geographical cure, maybe a new job in another state, maybe a new house, maybe a new car. A lot of times it is not the material possessions of the things of the world. It is what is broken inside of us that needs to be fixed because we're being enticed by the devil, hey, how much divorce is happening inside of our churches? It's because when lust is conceived, it goes into the mind, it looks into the eyeballs, and it takes over our body. When every man is tempted, when he is drawn away with his own lust and enticed, then when lust have conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. When sin's done, when sin was done with David, David was a broken king, a broken man. When sin was done with David, he was broken. He went into a state of repentance, a state of having to get back right with God, but David carried the pain of that sin for the rest of his life. That's why I'm telling you as a preacher, the word of God is, if you do not listen what it says here, then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You may not believe that buying a bigger house than you need is sin. It can become sin when it robs you of your peace, robs you of your money, and you became a slave to the bank, and you start working more hours, and you lose your spirituality. You lose your church attendance. You lose your relationship with your spouse. You lose your children to drug abuse and things that they get into because you're not home. Sin will will produce sin, the lust of the world, and all of a sudden that half a million dollar home will become the anchor that takes you to the bottom of the sea in debt, and you'll lose your family for it. That is how it can happen. Am I saying any, I'm not preaching against riches, folks. Now, be as rich as you want. Be as enticed as you want. If you've got a good job, you can afford things, there's nothing wrong with that. You can be a multi-bazillionaire and still be saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. You can flip a hamburger at McDonald's and still be saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. But if that enticement of the money, you know, even being poor, flipping burgers and piety and saying, I'm just a lowly man and staying in poverty, when you could do better for your family, that can also produce sin because you're living a lie. But a people can do better. But let's have to see that bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Death happened as a result of sin for King David. 
And many of us, sin has produced death in our lives. Lifelessness. Verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. When you don't have sin in that heart that's not being dealt with, when your life is not producing more fruits of evil because of sin that is producing death, it could be financial, spiritual, relationship, you name it. What is it in your life that you go, man, if I could conquer this thing, I'll be all right. Man, if I could just throw this up on the altar and God had help me with it, it'll be all right. Many of you just got to make a decision to do it. Absolutely just do it. Because when you overcome sin and you stand up boldly in confidence in the word, then those perfect gifts of love, peace, long-suffering, enjoying a date day with your spouse, looking at things through spiritual eyes, then when you are one of own gods, in verse 18, James 1 and 18, when his own will be God us with the word of truth, that means when you become saved and Jesus is your Savior, he is your focus, he is your life, he is your love, he is the one you follow, he's the one you pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow him with everything that you have. You don't deny him with the lust of the flesh. You are begotten in Christ Jesus because you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's what it means to be begotten. Amen. Because you are an extension of God's grace, God's mercy, God's goodness, and all the attributes of God with the word of truth. The word of truth in verse 18 means that's Jesus. Of his own will begot us with he us with the word of truth, Christ Jesus, that we should be a kind of the first fruits of his creatures. When David sinned, he was not producing first fruits of a being a creature that was with God. He was producing the first fruits of being a child of the devil, someone that was in a backslidden condition that produced lifelessness. Now flip over here. To Matthew, temptation. You remember that word, temptation. Many of you are tempted to leave your job, tempted to find a new job. Many of you are tempted to find a new spouse. And you're flirting with ideas of going and finding another man, going and finding another woman. Oh, if I could just get out of this marriage. Oh, if I could just get away from this church. Oh, if I could just get away from this preacher that's driving me crazy, stepping on my toes every Sunday. Oh, if I could just make a promotion at work. Oh, if I could just do all these number of things, it'll just be better. But wherever you go in this life, amen, you will take you with you. 100% of the time and if you are broken you will take the broken with you but if you want true peace you've got to overcome the temptations and what goes on with these eyeballs Jesus said here in Matthew 5 and 27 ye have heard that it was said of them by them of old time thou shalt not commit adultery but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Jesus has taken your body parts, your temptations, your lust and your desires, and he's making you accountable, making me accountable. Words of red. This is what Christ Jesus said. Whosoever looketh on the woman to lust, so when my eyeballs look at a woman... And I say, I say this about my wife all the time. I'm like, yeah, my beautiful woman. I love my woman. I love my little, my little pooky dudes. But if these eyeballs look on another woman and have those same feelings, I'm lusting. Guard those eyeballs. Because the devil will take the instinct of a man, the instinct of a woman that wants love, affection, to be cherished, to be honored, to be respected. You, you get this now. You young as it ain't married yet, you listen up real good. 
If a man or woman feels disrespected, not revered, not regarded in their home, and they're not treated with respect, they're going to be more likely to lust and look because they are desiring, and it's not necessarily a physical attraction. They will desire things to fill that soul. And the devil will use that temptation of wanting to be loved, honored, and respected, and cherished, just like it was when it was stated in the marriage vows, for better or worse, till death do us part, the enticement of that temptation. That's why divorces are happening. Because the two people are not lusting for each other inside of that marriage because there's too much evil there's too much sin that has produced lifelessness, that has produced disharmony, that has produced a breeding ground for the bacteria of the devil to exist inside of their marriage. And it splits them. So Jesus said, If thou right hand offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not the whole body should be cast into hell. Discipline. Absolute discipline. Jesus is saying this fleshly parts of our body, it's better just to pluck them out than to have your whole body burn in hell. You really can't say anything more different than that. I'm going to deal with something real, real gentle right here. I don't even know what I'm fixing to say. The Holy Ghost is going to say it. Your body is not your own. You were paid for by a price. And Jesus paid on that cross on Calvary's hill. When they took Jesus outside the gates, took him out there where they burn the trash and throw all the garbage, put him up on that cross, he paid that price. And just like scripture teaches when Jesus taught about the prodigal that was in the trash out there, in the hog slop, squandered his wealth, his inheritance, everything on riotous living. The Bible teaches that he came to himself. Someone needs to listen to me right here. and You need to come to yourself and go Maybe my eyes need to get plucked out. Maybe my hands or feet need to be cast out. Because they're causing me to sin through temptation. You have control through the power of the blood of Christ to get right with God. And never have to touch that sin again. That's a message for somebody. Verse 30. Thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that that whole body should be cast into hell. This living, this Christian life, when we get out of what we're going through here, somebody's got to go to work today. Somebody's got to be the CEO. Somebody's got to be the vice president. Someone's got to be in sales. Someone's got to flip the burgers and dig the ditches. But the very root of it, Christ has to be the center of your life. And with Christ being the anchor and the center it will produce the first fruits of God because good decisions, righteous decisions. You won't be enticed by the temptations of the devil because his number one job is to destroy everything you have trying to serve Christ. So don't just lay down and cover up your head and just think life's going to go away because it's not. You're going to have to get up and go to work. You're going to have to get up and love your spouse. You're going to have to go up and quit being a loser. Quit being a loser. Thinking you're a loser. Acting like you're a loser because that is what comes into our life. 
We are what we believe. We are what we think. And I've seen people, including myself, when I have that negative self-image, I have that negative talk, and I listen to all the negative voices in my head, those are temptations to destroy my life. And trust me, your hands will go and destroy your life. Your feet will go and help you destroy your life. These are serious teachings by Jesus Christ of Nazareth to us Christians right here today that you have got to make a decision to serve Him. You're not a loser. You're not a nobody. You're not unwanted. You are everything in the fulfillment of what happened on the cross of Calvary and the inheritance of the kingdom to come when you can look in that mirror and even if you've got to lie to yourself for a little while and just say, I'm a child of God. Say it over and over. I'm a child of God. I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God. Amen. I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. And I'm a child of God. I'm a blood bought and washed in the blood of the Lamb. And ain't no devil in hell going to take me out because I love my Jesus uh, with everything inside of my life uh, and proclaim that I believe that Jesus Christ uh, is the Son of God. He died on an old rugged cross. Uh, he rose from the grave and He ascended to heaven and He now sits on the right hand of the Father. He has prepared a mansion for me and all those uh, around me that decide to get saved. There is no reason to act like a loser today, Christian folks. Uh, Get up and stand up. Hold your head high in a world that wants to persecute you because Christ is returning with great power and great glory when he rides on the hills, when he rides on the mountains, when he rides on the clouds of glory, riding on that old white horse with his thigh that says King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We will know that we know through faith only now, but we will see with these eyeballs that many Many of us should have had plucked out to, to keep our bodies going to hell that we see our Savior and the sinners are going to see him too. So if you're a sinner today and you're lost without Christ, it's a beautiful day to quit being a loser and get saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb and turn away from that wretched life that you're living that is causing you compound misery. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I love you all out there today. I pray for all of you. Stand up, stand strong, be confident in the word. Amen.